Secretary of State for Justice, Gordon Henderson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Number one. So, sir. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We are committed to making prisons a safe place to work and providing prison officers with the right support, training and tools to empower them to do their jobs. Our prison officers are the hidden heroes of the criminal justice system. They do great work keeping the public safe every single day. Gordon Henderson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I'd like, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to, for that, that answer from the, uh, my right hon. Friend, and uh, I, I hope he would acknowledge that uh, prison officers work in a dangerous and violent environment. Uh, and I would urge him to take this opportunity to acknowledge also that expecting prison officers to work in such a violent in, uh, environment uh, until they are 68, 68 years old is wholly unacceptable. And will he commit to an urgent review into how the pension age of prison officers can be reduced so it reflects that of other public sector workers in similar challenging environments, such as police officers and firefighters who are able to retire at 60. Oh, well, look, I do appreciate the, uh, the point my hon. Friend, uh, fairly ch- the challenge he fairly makes, actually. And, uh, look, I would say just a couple of things. First of all, obviously anybody um, who is violent towards staff will face the full consequences of their actions and should be um, will ensure that they are properly and effectively and swiftly dealt with. In terms of the age issue, obviously all prison officers who joined the service um, certainly after t- April 2001 go through and have to pass an annual fitness test. That obviously applies to prison officers over the age of 65 and even some of those people who have applied for those roles that are at age range have passed the fitness test and are performing their roles effectively. And actually I have to say I think the service um, and the prisoners themselves can benefit from people with that level of experience and they do play an important part as the key members of the team. Jim Shannon. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the, uh, the, the Minister for his response. Uh, it's not just the prison officers who feel the pain of the attacks and, and, and what happens to them. It's also the families. Can I just ask the, the Minister what has been done to help the families, for those who are suffering physically but are also suffering perhaps from PTSD, coming out of prisons? <coughs> The honourable gentleman uh, makes a valid point, as he often does in this house, around actually uh, we, off- we, we, we focus on those frontline service personnel like our uh, brilliant uh, prison officers, but also the people that they, their families and their friends can often be, obviously people who are, work, uh, who are working with them out in their social lives and their family lives, and therefore pick up on that. We do provide post-incident support uh, through our care teams, the trauma risk management teams, uh, work around occupational health. There's obviously counselling for staff who are impacted. Uh, by violence in the workplace. The best way we crack down on this is being very clear that that kind of behaviour simply won't be tolerated and it will be prosecuted. Steve Reed. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I first of all welcome the Secretary of State to his place and indeed his, uh, his other colleagues on the, uh, on the government front bench. Now, now. uncontrolled violence in prisons is a key reason officers leave their jobs nearly as quickly as Tory chancellors. One in four prison officers now quit their jobs within a year of starting. Yeah. This damages supervision of pri- prisoners, leaving families, victims' families sickened to see Stephen Lawrence's killer bragging about using a mobile phone in his cell and the murderer Sean Mercer running a drugs empire from behind bars. When will the government get back control of our prisons? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'll first of all thank the uh, right honourable gentleman for his, uh, his initial opening remarks in uh, <laughs> welcoming the team. <laughs> to our places. And I look forward. There will be a range of issues, I'm sure, across this dispatch box, actually, and, and away from the dispatch box, where we'll be able to work together for the benefit of the, the safety of the public. But I also look forward, obviously, to our exchanges here at the dispatch box. Look, we, we know there is a link between um, staffing levels and um, prison violence. This is why we're continuing to strengthen the front line. We've seen an increase in prison officers uh, from under 18,000 to almost 22,000. That's some 3,770 more full-time officers. And he's also highlighted a couple of uh, of instance, and I, I agree they are completely unacceptable. That's why I've uh, initiated a review to ensure that that kind of situation can't happen again. People need to understand if they are in prison, they're there for a reason, and it's to keep the public safe, and we will make sure that they are. Yeah. 